I must first welcome you to New Orleans. Thank you. And um, I, I do have to say that you were absolutely exceptional in the film, which you all will see tonight. Um, I want you to just speak on um, your career. You know, your career is constantly growing, and I'm quite sure, you know, uh, once this film hits, like it's, it's going to be catapulted uh, even further. So, if you could just talk about some of the challenges that you and other Nollywood actors face in the industry and how you've been able to circumvent those challenges and turn those challenges into opportunities. Okay, well, in Nollywood, um, we face a lot of challenges especially when you are coming up, like it's very, very, very difficult for you to get around in Hollywood because we are not united, kind of, you know? We lack an umbrella of association. We have like Eurobars, they do their own thing different. We have like Alsace, they do their own thing different. We have like Ebos, you know what I'm saying? They do their, they do their own thing d different. So it's very, very difficult for you to get to room because these people, they have the way of, you know, just like separatism in the way they do cast roles, so which which make it very very difficult for anybody to get a movie to get a movie role. But you know, we keep pushing. It's not easy. We keep pushing. At least the more roles you you do in Hollywood, you get your face there. So anybody from any group can call you to come and do a movie. So yeah, it's clear. So um, what if? So given your insight, like what advice would you give other? other actresses mm -hmm. um, in this industry to be able to um, face those challenges and move past them? Basically, just, you know, keep working yourself, keep making yourself better, because when you are good, they can't ignore you, you know, there's certain stage you will get, you know, through this hustle and all that, they will see that you are good and they can never ignore you, regardless of where you're coming from, you know, whether you're outside or you're about, you can be, in, you know, every movie, look at Mama, she's everywhere, you know, she's like, Blah, 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 all that. So she can act in any movie she wants to be in. So yeah. So how was it how was it for you working with this cast and crew? Amazing. Tadasa was in Nigeria. You know, we had a lot to talk about acts up and Hollywood, like how you put doing here. You know, like I found out that it's not easy anywhere too, you know. Them too is like very hard to get a role here and all that. So we discussed all that. So it's amazing. And I'm here in New Orleans about this movie and I'm excited about it. That's excellent. So um, I'd like to uh, send it back over to Terrence. Um, so you worked with another director on this project. Yes. Yes. So um, did you, how much communication did you have uh, with Chris? And were you able to, how were you able to make your visions align? I mean, these are two directors, you each have your own vision. But how were you able to, uh, to merge those, those two visions and create Product. Absolutely. I, th I think I spoke to Chris once or twice, and to be totally honest with you, I was stressed <laughs> to, to direct half a movie and then have somebody on the other side of the world direct it. Number one, because I'm a control freak. Uh, number two, imagine you make gumbo and you make the best gumbo in your family, and then they say, midway through, we're going to let Cousin Larry finish the gumbo. <laughs> That's the, that's the best analogy that I can, uh, and, and um, my filmmaking friends who were directors didn't make it easier. They're like, dude, you go on uh, uh, somebody else's, you know, and I'm like, come on, man, chill out. And, and so, uh, yeah, and so it got to a point where I, I just, I sat down and I thought about it, and I accepted it. That's all I could do. Uh, because of scheduling, I couldn't go to Nigeria. I was doing another movie at the time that they were going to Nigeria, so we knew ahead of time. So I prayed on it, and um, what, what, what really happens is I spoke to Austin, I spoke to Tadasi, and I spoke to Kenneth, who's from Nigeria, and I told them about the tone that we had established. But what I came to realize is that the way we make gumbo in New Orleans is different from the way they make gumbo in Nigeria, or even in Lafayette, <laughs> you know, or Uptown, <laughs> you know. And, and so I, I accepted that. And, and um, 
a lot of times I would, you know, we would complain as writers and storytellers in New Orleans with Hollywood movies. They would hire some British woman to write a movie about, you know, southeastern Louisiana, rural. And so um, I, I said, I know New Orleans. I'm gonna do that. Chris knows Nigeria. I tell you what really made me um, at ease and get out of my control freak stuff was I talked to, one day Austin put me on the phone with Chris, and his energy, man, was just so great. He's like, hey, my brother, what's cool? And it was like, I've never met him before, man, but we were just instant brothers. And so we talked for about five, 10 minutes, and then I, I gave it up, I was like, we good. <laughs> we good. I, I just wanted to say hello, to, uh, give a shout out to my family, man, everybody that came out, I really appreciate you guys. My dad. My cousin Ayana just walked in, I'm going with my sister. What up, Z? <laughs> what up, easy? <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, I do have another question for you, but I, I got to get to the queen. I got to get to the queen. <laughs> the queen of Hollywood. I mean, we are simply honored to have you with us here tonight, uh, especially all the way from Nigeria. Um, just for the record, you are the queen of Nollywood. Just in case you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> and, and you're still one of the most sought after actresses in Nollywood. So, you know, one of the things that I'm interested in is just your, 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 uh, your secret to success and remaining relevant, remaining on everyone's radar in a business that is constantly changing, constantly evolving, and looking for fresh faces? Well, it's all about some hard work. It's all about perseverance. It's all about doing what you do to the best of your ability. It's not easy, like what Charity said, Starting up is very difficult in Nollywood. But I guess I came in when it was a bit easy. We were few then. But as I was climbing, it became very tough. I told myself I, I couldn't quit at that time. That I wouldn't have started it if I knew I wouldn't finish it. So I, I took the bull by the hands. I started working very hard. It's not easy. We don't work hourly the way you guys work here. I know, right? <laughs> I know that at some point you were like, oh my God. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, we can work 24 hours nonstop. It's a lot of hard work, and um, there's no extra pay for that. Um, <laughs> You read, you try to improve, and um, you don't have to be desperate. Because as a starter, when you're desperate, you, you make a lot of mistakes. And you won't be focused to be able to do what you have come to do. So it is not an easy thing. But I thank God I'm here today. I have to say something. When Austin told me about this movie, Sorry, I'm deviating, but... Um, oh, no, it's fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> when Austin sent the script to me, I read it, I told him it was awesome. I never knew that this beautiful lady was able to put it up. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> so I asked him if the director here was going to direct us there. He said no that I was going to work with another person, but the American lady was coming. I was looking forward to meeting you. You're, you're great. Beautiful actress. <laughs> you will not believe it. I, I learned one or two things from you. I learned quite a lot, actually, from you. Because I learn every day, probably that's one of the secrets. 
I don't look down on people. I don't say you just started. I learned, I must see something positive to learn from you. Um, you remember the scene, sorry, you remember the scene we, have at, we had at the palace? Uh -huh. Your first time at the palace? <laughs> How did you feel? She worked with me, a Nigerian, then Kofi, a Ghanaian. It was like mixed cultures, but it was fun. That's just the secret to everything. Hard work, learning every day, perseverance, and um, every positive vibe is involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, speaking of hard work, I'd like to uh, I'd like to speak to our production manager, uh, Miss Rhonda. Now, uh, now on set, legend has it that you earned the name Film the Film Seal, yes. as in the Navy Seal. <laughs> Anything that was done behind the camera, aside from touching the camera, was a part of my job. Wow. Right. So. <laughs> I gotta say something. One day she had school or something, and she was gonna be, you know, maybe two hours late to set, but she was coming, and so everybody kept, coming, "Where's Ron? Where's Ron?" I said, she's coming. And it was like, I, I felt like she was directing the movie. <laughs> and then when she came, everybody said, oh, thank God you're here. <laughs> well, that, well, that kind of leads me to my next question. It's like, OK, so you know, a typical day is like, what, uh, 8, 12, 16 hours on, on set? Anywhere from 16 to 24. Some nights it was constant. So even after you know, rap was yelled, like, did your job stop? No, my job never stopped. As soon as we wrapped, I was getting emails ready for the next day. I was getting the shots ready for the next day, making sure I had everything I needed. And wow. Wow. That, that's, that, that's wonderful. You know, that is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Shani. <laughs> So um, I, I wanted to I wanted to ask Tadase um, when the Queen was speaking. Uh, she made me think of think about something. Uh, just being an actress in this industry, and you know, really going after you know the roles that you desire, taking advantage of opportunities. Uh, uh, how do you maintain who you are as a person and your integrity? And well. Um, I have a great support system with friends who have known me way before acting, way, way, way before acting. Um, just about everyone who has been from college and on knows way before acting. They keep me grounded. Um, they know who I am uh, outside of the camera, <laughs> behind closed doors, late at night, House of Blues and all of that. Um, <laughs> So, um, and obviously my, my husband as well, my mom, um, these are people who know me before all of this and will remind me and check me in a heartbeat, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, again, it sounds like having, you know, having a support system behind you, you know, helps keep you grounded. Yes. You know, helps keep you grounded and, and, and keep your focus where it should be, especially in a, in a, in a business that's so competitive. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, I, I'm blessed to be in a facility where I can train and where I never forget that first, those first years in class, you know, those first scenes in class, me first getting up there and I'm humbled when I meet new actors and I remember that same struggle of, you know, just everything that runs through your mind about auditions and, and headshots and, you know, that constant struggle, like, I want to be good enough, but you are enough. That is our new hashtag for the evening. Hashtag guys. You are enough. Because you are. You are. Um, just real quick, uh, uh, Derek, what, so what can we expect from you next? Oh, next? Oh, well, you know, alongside from producing, I also direct. Uh, 
known for music videos. I done worked with uh, NBA Youngboy, uh, Birdman, Yigging, Twins, Flora, this goes on. But uh, I actually brought my next project here. Uh, Andre uh, Tillman, where you at? Andre Tillman, stand up for it. So let me just, let me just, let me just uh, talk to you about Andre Tillman. He's the older brother of Cameron Tillman. Uh, so I know the name doesn't ring a bell. Uh, I'm from home, Louisiana. He stays in my neighborhood. And uh, I'm, besides this, I'm an actual educator, school teacher. I actually taught him and his, his younger brother. Uh, but on the day of September 23rd, 2014, uh, his younger brother transitioned. He was killed by a police officer in my neighborhood. So uh, seeing those two guys in the neighborhood together reminds me of me and my brother, who always was together. It meant a lot. And being in the person that I am and having success and being, in, you know, a filmmaker, uh, this is my Fruitville station. Wow. You know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing a documentary uh, about it. Then we're going to follow up and do a, a feature film about his brother. And we're going to tell it from his perspective about who Cameron was and what he meant to him. So that is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. I have two more questions. I, I, I just wanted to piggyback on that. Uh, Terrence, I, I'd like for you to address this. Just the importance, the importance of, of having people from within the community tell our stories. You know, just that is a prime example. Um, how important is that? It's very important. You know, when, it, when you talk about documentaries, there's a saying that uh, your documentary is only as good as your access to your subject. I, I know New Orleans. I know being a black man in America. Uh, just like Chris knows Nigeria. And we really, really, really could not have done this without, you know, uh, one of the things that you'll notice in the film is the music. And when I showed rough copies of the film to people, they asked me who scored it. We didn't have a score. The music was done by Marla B. Spirit, who's my former bandmate. Uh, Tom Gray, Kim, um, Chad, is Chad in the house? Don B. Uh, Bartholomew Boys, the uh, famous Dave Bartholomew's family. Um, my man uh, Theo, is Theo in the house? Theo's not here yet, but um, it, it was really a community. Uh, my, a good friend of mine, Sam, I went to high school, used to work with. We used his house as a location. Uh, Cupcake Ferris, are you in the house? We, we, yeah, we, we used their uh, facilities to shoot stuff. Chardet, who's making all that noise over there, she, she introduced me to Derek Dark a year ago after this event. And that's how we became on this stage together. So it's really important. Um, Rhonda, uh, Tadasi, Austin, and most of the actors, we all came from Launch Acting School. So we were fans. <laughs> My family, my, my aunt Barbara, while I, I, moved, I just moved to Atlanta, I stayed by her to save me thousands of dollars in hotel expenses, you know. So, so it, it just, everybody contributed. That's why it's, it's, it's a special, you know, uh, project to me, man. You know, family. And, when, when, and if, if, in New Orleans, family is not blood. Family is community. So, um, you know, speaking about conversations, uh, how do you keep this conversation going about uh, you know, bridging that gap between Hollywood and, and, and Nollywood, uh, especially after this premiere? And uh, what do you encourage people who are in the audience who are motivated to uh, continue this conversation? You know, how should they go about uh, doing that? All right, um, just to get back to Ms. Rhonda Mitchell, not only is she a wonderful production manager, she's also a great actress. I just want to keep that up. And talking about support system, I want to use this opportunity to thank my wife of 22 years. She 
she has been so wonderful. She has been there for me, backing me up, all my travels to Africa, coming back here, sleepless nights. I mean, she has been so awesome. And I thank you so much, and I love you so much. Now, back to your question. Um, Hollywood makes Nollywood. As you guys remember, we did our, our first premiere here last year. And the turnout was great. Now, as you can see, we have almost double the size right now. You know, looking at, you know, looking at it, we have almost double the size. And, you know, it just shows how important it is, you know, to keep this movement going. You know, we have to keep it going. Um, there's just so much work to do, you know, as far as the collaboration is concerned. You know, after we premiered this movie last year, I keep thinking about how we can get Nollywood and Hollywood back together, how we can bridge that gap. Because if you go to Africa, for example, if you go to Nigeria or any other African countries, they show American movies at the theaters right there. You go to any theater, it's American movies at the box offices, you know. So when you come down here, unfortunately, you don't get to see a lot of African movies here when you go to the theaters. You know, all you've seen is big Hollywood you know, movies and stuff like that. And we want to bridge the gap. We want to bridge that gap, and the only way we can do that is yes. The only way we can achieve that is constant collaboration, you know, by doing what we did, you know, with this, with this uh, wonderful crew here, you know, taking them to Africa, bringing Africa here, like you see all my people from Africa, they came here, we took that idea, and we want to keep doing that, we want to keep promoting, you know, Hollywood, Nollywood, you know, you do your hashtag on uh, Instagram, you know, Hollywood makes Nollywood. You know, uh, different works, you know, so many things you can do, you know, post on Instagram, post on Facebook, on Twitter, you know, so many things you can do to keep the movement going. We want to reach that gap and we want to continue to do this. You know, my, my aim is to continue this collaboration, having Nollywood and Hollywood together, you know, until Africa movies, until they start showing here at the theaters. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I, you know, I have to say that that, uh, that that all of the responses here tonight have been very, very insightful and impactful. And the the importance of bridging that gap, as you say, I think is very, 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 very important um, because it, it, it affords us an opportunity to work together, you know, to work together, to get to know each other better, you know, both personally and culturally. And, you know, who knows what can manifest out of that. So. You know, bridging that gap is, I think, is very, very crucial. And the more each and every one of you can just support this idea, I, I think the faster this will happen, you know, for all of us. So thank you so much for, yes. Before we wrap up. Also, my daughter, please, before I forget you, Gigi, I love you. Thanks for coming too. <laughs> Well, one last thing I want to say before I hand over the uh, phone to uh, the director. Uh, this movie you're about to watch, you know, we're trying to, we're, we're still trying to make this movie tight, you know, because our aim is to get this movie to Netflix and get it all over the world, you know. So we had to get it ready for this premiere. So we're still, still trying to get it tight, you know. So it's a wonderful movie, movie you guys are going to enjoy, you're going to have fun, you're going to laugh and just, you know, have fun and enjoy it, okay? Thank you very much. I just wanted to add that our moderator, what's the name of the film that you just did, Tribeca? Um, Burning Cane. There's a movie called Burning Cane that's playing at Tribeca Film Festival right now. He just flew in from New York. And on my Twitter feed, uh, his name, someone, I don't know who it was, said, a name to watch. So let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Oh yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, Austin too, man. I definitely appreciate you, brother, for, you know, man, for all of us, Terrence, Tadasi, man, just sitting down at that table and making this happen. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, ready to watch this movie. <laughs> and great times to Lunch Academy. Miss Ashley, where are you at, Miss Ashley? <laughs> Nicole, Nicole, are you ready, right Nicole? Shout out to Nicole. Thank you so much. Really, really, really is that you here too, right? Thank you, thank you guys so much. You guys, I mean, you guys are so wonderful. So wonderful. I love you all.